Good afternoon ladies and gents and welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for clicking that button and joining me for today's video. I hope you're all well. Well, ladies and gents, the bushcraft show has been and gone and it does now feel like a long distant memory. In fact, it has been now two weeks since I attended the bushcraft show and I must say I did have a blast and I hope the same can be said for Steve. Now, while I was at the show, I did pick up a few choice pieces. Um, some I intended to pick up when I arrived at the show and a few others that I just picked up on a whim. So ladies and gents in this video we are going to check out my bushcraft wares and show you guys what I picked up at the bushcraft show this year. Let's crack on. So ladies and gents contained inside this brown paper bag are all of the goodies I purchased from the bushcraft show this year but just before we delve into that I would like to show you one of the bigger buys I made this year and I've also got a very special buy that I was very lucky enough to pick up this year at the show and that is on my belt. So the first big purchase and one I intended to pick up at this year's Bushcraft show is the Grail water filter. Now, I have been after one of these Grail water filters ever since I've seen this featured on my good friend's YouTube channel, Corley Outdoors. I was determined this year to pick one of these up at the show. I did see these at last year's show, but I was kind of umming and ahhing at the price. This cost me £99 UK, and I honestly think it is well worth the price. I've had fun with this today, filtering out the... Uh, the river just out front there and this is the 710 mil version or the 24 fluid ounce this removes 99.9% .9 of all bacteria and protozoa it has a 5 litre per minute filtering um, and 250 litres per cartridge which isn't bad at all and it does all that in an 8 second press which feels about right um, when I was using it before now if you follow the channel, as you know, I do use a Sawyer Mini uh, to filter my water from wild water sources and that has been absolutely fantastic. I think this is going to be a little bit more practical, although not as lightweight as the Sawyer. But again, this will double up as my second water container um, going with my um, Nalgene. I think it's a 1.3 litre or something like that. So this will um, accommodate the other pocket on the pack nicely. So now delving into the paper bag of goodies. The first purchase made quite early on at the show was from Mr. David Fryers. If you are familiar with David Fryers, you will know he makes quality fabric cases for all of your bushcraft cookware. This one is no exception. And I asked him specifically if he had a, a pack that would fit my Jaeger stick panner folding fry pan. And indeed he did. And he brought that to the show for me to purchase. So fantastic quality really well put together has a nice velcro strap system there roll top enclosure and then we have a snap buckle system to keep everything safe in there these are ideal if you're not cleaning your pots after use and um, you can just put that in there and that'll keep the rest of your gear clean second purchase made was another wax canvas pack i have no idea what i'm going to use this one for but he had a few with him this is a nice quality zippered pouch so i'm thinking maybe i could put um, coffees all the way i've got a coffee pouch um, currently, but tinder pouch maybe, something like that. Now Steve, being the very kind and generous individual that he is, went for a wander around the show himself, and when I met back up with him, he presented me with this. Now if you do follow the channel, you'll know Steve very kindly sent me the Bushcraft Spain 3x3 oil skin tart very early on, and this is the actual um, cordage from Bushcraft Spain that will complement that tarp to no end. Now this supposedly smells like raw sewage, um, whether it's dry or wet but I can tell you it smells very sweet and natural um, and I think it's been bathed or soaked in some sort of natural turpentine or something 
but again this will complement that tarp and will give it that rustic look next time I use it so thank you very much Steve. I think this comes in 40 or 20 meters I'm not sure what this is but we'll measure that out and probably use that for guy lines for the corners last few pieces from the bag so I have been looking for a new strop and I think this was purchased at Beaver Bushcraft as you can see there 30 pounds um, it's a double sided strop and a very fine leather and I do like it it's nice quality um, it's a shame about the stamp on the end could have done without that so I could use the full length of both sides but um, this will give me options now when I'm stropping my knives I do use green I use blue compound and with this I did pick up some um, one micron 14,000 grit diamond stropping compound so that should go on there nice and give me that nice mirror polish to my knives in the future final steps of stropping there so that is that I also picked up a couple of fire steels from Josh at Fired Woods after we did the interview um, I think this one is going to complement the new knife which I will show you in a minute very well although we do have the antler as well so I do have options there now ladies and gents just by absolute sheer luck and by the will of the gods it seems this year at the Bushcraft show I was extremely lucky and was able to get my hands on one of the most sought after Bushcraft knives in the Bushcraft community now I'm not going to mention the name of the gent I bought this from, he's asked me not to, but I will say thank you very much, sir. Um, I will cherish this for this, I will cherish this for the rest of my life. Um, initially, I did pick this up from the gent as an, uh, a future sort of investment, but I've decided it is such a beautiful knife, it would be a shame to just store this away. And I think too many people are buying Sandy's knives now just to put away for a future profit. Um, so this is going to be used in my kit, very proudly I might add. Now I know everyone raves about the Raymi's Woodlow knife and it is a fantastic knife in its own right, but I do believe that Sandy's knives, Jack Low, are just as sought after, if not more. Now Sandy has been making knives for the best part of 16 years and I do believe he is at the pinnacle of his craft. The quality Sandy puts into his knives is just absolutely exemplary. Um, and I do believe he is quite a scrup scrupulous man when it comes to the quality control of his own knives. And nothing leaves his um, workshop unless it meets the highest standards, as well you know if you are very lucky enough to own one of these. Now this knife is one of the early models and this was created in December 2016, which makes this eight years old now I believe. Um, the gent that owned this previously, he told me this had not touched a blade of grass and I do believe it. There was not a mark on this blade, no stropping, no signs of stropping or use. So this is pretty much a brand new knife. So this particular knife is the Jack Low Classic in 01 tool steel. And the majority of Sandy's knives are actually built in 01. Um, recently he started building in AABL. But uh, an absolutely stunning example this knife is. And we have a 4mm tapered tang down to the bottle of the classic Coke bottle um, handle grip there. Very comfortable in the hand. Uh, very ergonomic and the scales are stabilized English U so you couldn't get much more English than this knife. Um, Sandy does live down in Wiltshire and he has a YouTube channel called The Wiltshire Man where he goes out and does wild camping, cooking, things like that. But again everything about the knife and the sheath just exudes quality and I am just beside myself that I've actually got this in my hand. Um, as soon as the gent said this was for sale um, I just threw my bank card at him, my phone, everything. I just threw myself at him. Um, <laughs> again, absolutely stunning. Very, very lucky I am. Now for the eagle-eyed amongst you and the knife aficionados, you may notice one feature missing from this blade, and that is it has no lanyard hole on the back of the scales there, as you can see. Now, I don't know where you stand on lanyards, but I've never used one with a knife of this size, nor do I intend to in the future. And I think the lanyard hole on this type of knife now is it's an obsolete sort of feature now. If you're using large choppers, then yeah, it's nice to have that security around your wrist. But for something like this, um, I don't think it's necessary. And I think the knife looks all the better for it. Yeah, I do believe it was a, a miscommunication when the knife was being commissioned. Um, Sandy got his wires crossed and thought the guy asking for this didn't want a lanyard hole. Um, so that was eliminated from the build. But again, that just makes this a more of a one-off um, and it is now in my possession.
<laughs> now Sandy is slowing down with the knife making now and he is not releasing as many as he once did which makes this knife and all of his knives even more elusive and the ones that are in the current process of being built are unfortunately already sold um, in most cases so getting hold of one of these again is pretty much like rocking horse poop and hen's teeth although I do believe hens have tiny teeth so. now there was one more thing I did pick up from the show um, and I've lost it would you believe it I did pick up a set of um, pocket bellows for the fire I've looked everywhere high and low can't find it um, so I'll have to buy another one although I've never used them in the past it was just something I picked up on a whim um, so yeah four quid wasted fantastic but again the jack low everything's better <clears throat> and just like that once again we are drastically losing the light so just before I wrap this video up I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of my channel members that's Brindle2009, Steve Abs, Stephen O'Rourke and Nini82. Thank you very much for your extended support and thank you to all you guys for sticking with the channel and hopefully watching this video to the end. Go and check out the other content until the next one you stay safe and as always stay crafty. See you again guys bye bye. That wasn't living. Oh bugger, I forgot. Um, just before I go, the next video will be the Winnerwell second recombustion um, fire pit and grill. I had great success with that at the show, as you would have seen in the last video. So we'll do an in-depth review on that in the next video. Um, and then probably the S300 uh, power station with the solar panel. Bloody hell. So yeah, until then guys, stay crafty. See you again. Bye bye.